morning. I am still fighting off a bit of a chest cold, so I'm going to try to do this without a coughing fit, but I do apologize if I suddenly have to duck behind the podium. My name is Irene. I teach the weekly yoga class here, facilitate the monthly labyrinth walks, and I am the co-chair of the Frederick chapter of the Covenant of Unitarian Universalist Pagans. Frederick Cups is an organization dedicated to networking pagan identified Unitarian Universalists, educating people about paganism, promoting interfaith dialogue, developing pagan liturgies and theologies, and supporting pagan identified UU professionals. That's all longhand for saying that if you like to hug trees and howl at the moon, we might have some things in common. When I was a little girl, I used to lie in my yard with one ear pressed to the earth. I was listening to a song. It sounded like a choir of thousands all singing at once. And every now and then, one particular voice would rise above the others and then descend back into that tapestry of sound. It was constantly evolving and changing, but always part of a greater progression held by the other voices. I'm not sure what I thought the music was. One of the beautiful things about children is that they are generally less inclined to try to take apart mystical experiences and can accept and instead just accept things as they are that aren't easily explained. So to me, there was a song inside the earth, and if you listened, you could hear it. When I, I think about how that listening child came to stand here, as the agricultural year winds down and pointed hats and cloaks are de rigueur once more, that song is the first thing that comes to mind. You see, paganism is built around mystery. The deepest secrets of the different traditions or, or kinds of paganism are called mysteries with a capital M. Almost every pagan I have met stumbled into this path because of an experience that doesn't fit any of the neat little boxes uh, that we like to put things into. I am out as a pagan, which means that I comfortably I self-identify as a member of an Earth-centered belief system. If the topic comes up, even amongst strangers, I will own my beliefs. Now, what that tends to mean in practical terms is that after about 15 minutes of someone finding out that I'm a witch, they tell me about the time they saw a ghost. <laughs> or the time they got a tarot reading and it all came true, or the time they saw lights dancing in the woods or knew what was going to happen before it occurred. I find myself saying the same words every single time. You are not crazy. This world, this incredible experience of life that we are sharing, is far wilder and more wonderful than we want it to be, than we are willing to let it be. It's easier if you can fit things into boxes. Life is less scary if you can explain everything that happens, either with protons and neutrons or with religious scripture. It gives us an illusion of safety, of predictability. But sometimes things happen that are outside the known systems of organization. So then what? Where do you go? Who do you tell? Those direct interactions with one of the mysteries of life change our perspective. Unfortunately, in this culture, what most people experience is anxiety, simply because there isn't a good box to put a mystical experience into. So we suppress those words we long to speak. We learn to leave out some of our most authentic and life-changing experiences because we lack a structure to explore them or because we fear being ridiculed. I was lucky. I grew up in a nominally Christian household. I was baptized and we went to Christmas and Easter services at church. But I come from a line of engineers, very rational, sensible people who spent their lives dominated by the use of reason in their respective fields. I would describe the actual religious leanings of my family as stealth atheism. We're still not sure what happened with me. <laughs> what that meant in a practical sense is that I was raised philosophically free. 
I was completely unencumbered with a dogmatic belief system of any kind, and I had parents who chose not to crush what could be seen as flights of fancy. Instead, they just let me explore, learn, and process in a way that was natural to me. So I lay in the yard and listened to the earth. I spent hours sitting in the tree in my front yard with one cheek pressed against the trunk, talking to the spirit inside it. I played in the stream nearby, clearing rocks out of the flow of water to let it flow more smoothly, and decorating the banks with shiny stones pressed into the earth, talking all the while to the spirit that dwelled in that place. I sang to the trees, I made friends with the houseplants in my home, I always loved decorating for Christmas, and do to this day, because it means that the trees at my home get to wear beautiful, sparkling ball gowns, white and ribbon. These were my friends as a child. I was always eccentric within the context of my peer group, so I gravitated toward other unusual kids. The readers and dreamers, the rebels and artists, musicians and lunatics. When I was 15, a friend lent me a copy of a book on paganism. Reading it was like watching the sunrise for the very first time. Finally, someone else got it. The world was neither composed solely of scientific laws in action, nor did it obey the directive of a particular religious text. Instead, life is bigger. Sentience and spirit are wider reaching than the textbooks say. Divine connection takes many forms, perhaps as many as there are people to experience that connection. And at the center of it all, the mystery, the precious fluid that fills the philosophical containers we build for it. Some people can experience divine grace and connection inside a church. For the first time, I found out that I wasn't wrong or crazy because my mystical experiences happened outside that particular box. So I became pagan. I don't remember telling my parents, most likely because the conversation was uneventful. As a teenager, I began building my practice with some friends in high school. I joined, in the, I joined the Marine Corps after graduation. The acceptance of my personal take on life, the universe, and everything at home meant that it didn't even occur to me to go into the broom closet, as pagans tend to say. So I had Wicca on my dog tags. Through the military pagan network and listings for spiritual groups where I was stationed in Okinawa, I found others like me. We wore camouflage utilities during the day and found our way to empty beaches at night to stand in a circle and connect to that greater mystery. And everywhere I went, the song of the earth went with me. I've traveled a lot. I've met so many wonderful people and had these incredible experiences that stray out of the territory of the rational or predictable. But instead of running in fear from something I do not understand, I take a deep breath, lean in, and expand the mystery I carry in my heart a little bit more and learn as I go. I do not think paganism will ever be one of the big three world religions, nor do I think it should be. It's a challenging path, it is not for everyone. Since we don't have easy boxes to file things into, we often find ourselves with as many questions as answers. Fascinating, beautiful questions that we are free to ask, explore, and be. We learn to sit with the mystery, to experience and grow, even if it means that we encounter something that can't be put into words. We balance our mundane lives and responsibilities against the tapestry of the mystery, against the knowledge that there is so much more. So, if you've seen a ghost, had a psychic experience, felt transcendental connection in the oddest of places, I can tell you right now, you are not crazy. That's the mystery, knocking at your door. I won't tell you what to do with that knowledge, but I can tell you this, you are not alone. And the Earth Service meets the third Sunday of the month. <laughs>